Hey everybody, welcome to the episode. I've got my hands firmly on the wheel and that is fitting because we are ready to go in that this boat, I believe, I believe this boat is minimally prepared for sea. Engine works, sails go up and down, anchor goes down and up. I got my DC electric system all sorted out and we're looking good. So enjoy the episode. We'll touch into some of the work that we've been doing the last couple of weeks and what we have looking forward. Okay, so <clears throat> the first work we did was on the DC electric system. In the last episode, I was 100% reliant on shore power. I had four batteries in three different locations connected by a complete hodgepodge of cables, which will show you some of the most disgusting, frankly, uh, frankly disgusting electric work I've ever seen, you know, in terms of how they spliced cables and how they ran cables and whatever. But we got past all that. Okay, so you'll see that these boards are bonded to the hull. Okay, this is the last piece of heavy cable come out. Okay, so this is what we're kind of doing. They got a cable that was connected and then they attached it. They did a butt splice from red to black and they sent it under the bilge and when it surfaced on the other side so it went down red it came up black and then it went through a bulkhead and on the other side of the bulkhead another butt splice and then it turned to red again and that's that's it's typical of what i'm finding on this boat the people were just frankly lazy too lazy to get the right color cable you know and i'm i'm, I'm peeling off they would have black cable and they put red tape on it they would have red cable and put black tape on it to try to at least match the function and it's just again if, if that's descriptive of the entire boat really you know, when you dig when you scratch deeper you find shit like this so it doesn't make me angry you know I, I, I get it that's why I got the boat cheaper and it's just so now you kind of extend that to engine maintenance and sail maintenance and rigging maintenance etc etc that's what you get so no worries it's all gonna be good but when you're troubleshooting a bilge pump that kind of connection directly to the battery is one of the things you look for whatever person maintained this thing over the last 15 years is gonna go to some special hell for boat owners just absolute trailer trash stuff just trashy trashy work they did it. just look at the way this black wire is twisted and wound around it goes under the next cable and are back around like a fucking knot like they're trying to actually tie knots with it I mean it's just absolutely look at that I mean just it's like holy shit <laughs> Okay, so let's review how the solar panels are actually mounted. My video the other day didn't do a good job of that. Of those stainless steel tubes you see going up and over. And they form the structure for a tent. You can look across the way. You see the green one and the blue one. Same basic idea as what I've got. So I have a number of stainless steel tubes. 
to form my bimini cover okay and i've got one here so i've got these stainless steel tubes i had added the fore and aft pieces for them here here there and out the end and i added these fiberglass strips this is a one by one correction one inch by one eighth inch fiberglass and these are attached to the outermost via u-boat u-bolt and the solar panels are then attached here there's a, a bolt going through the top and it's just a flat washer and a lock washer so the question i had was the question is is this sufficient to hold up against the wind loading that's going to be presented by a hurricane what? What kind of question is that? Here's what we're doing about it. Seizing wire is used to secure like the ends of cotter pins in place. We use it to secure rigging in place. And in this case, I'm going to use seizing wire to provide another means of connecting the solar panels to the fiberglass strip. And then I think I will put some more seizing on top of the connection between the um, the fiberglass strip and the fore and aft poles. We're going to attach right there. I don't know what the black shit is, but... So, this is temporary mod 002. That looks like a car battery. It's a marine battery. I took it out of the port side locker, put it on the counter here, and that battery is running my house loads. There's my ground and my positive cables to keep the back side of my panel energized so I can use the lights. Because I worked all day on the demobbing of the engine start cables and all that, the heavy cables, and I didn't get finished with solar, so I wanted a backup. That's a good charger. It's capable of discerning um, and customizing the charger, uh, the charging for lithium batteries, AGMs, you know, and um, flooded batteries. The blue box on the left is a solar controller. The one on the right is a DC to DC charger. So what we got here is a big battery. That's a 200 amp hour lithium battery. It's very expensive, so I'll treat it with respect. And I've got two AGM normal marine batteries down here. Those are going to be my engine start batteries. I don't have any auxiliaries connected yet. So that's why I can't crank the engine right now. Because I have to get the starter and the ignition. They're not wired up. So the basic plan is the solar power energy is going to come into the controller. And the controller is going to charge only the lithium battery. Then the lithium battery is going to send power to the charger and that's how my engine batteries are going to be charged in addition they'll get charged when the engine's running of course i intend to have the shore power charger only charging the lithium battery that's my intention although i believe this charger is supposed to be smart enough that it can charge a lithium battery and an agm but i don't want this charger and this one to both be trying to charge a battery at the same time so i think it's better to kind of separate these a wee bit anyway so by this time tomorrow that battery ought to be out of here and we ought to have the solar uh, cables hooked up and they're all here so i'm um, gonna uh, these are 12 volt panels and i'm running these in series so, you know, positive to negative, positive to negative, blah, 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 and the negative from the first one. But so let's, you know, don't get vertigo here. So over the back. Where are you? There's a hole somewhere. It's right there. See the hole? Yeah, that's the hole where the propane line came out to go to an external grill. You rat bastard. How can you be tamed already? How can you be... Oh. Ow. Ow. So this is a multimeter that I made as a kit. Okay, so black on black, red on red, and on the 
60 volt scale. Damn, that's pretty good. Peg tie. That's about 90 volts. Getting just under the one, about 80. Okay, so I've got uh, four solar panels, each one rated at 12 volts nominal. They're wired in series right now, and that means I should have 48 volts at the uh, outlet here. But I got about 80 volts. And you're thinking, oh my god, is there something wrong? No. We know that when the sun gets to its peak, the, the panels are going to make more than 12 volts. That's why you have a controller. Because you don't want to put... So I've got a controller here. And that's why you don't want to put, you know, um, 80 volts directly onto the darn battery. You pass it through a controller. Okay, kids, don't try this at home. These are alligator clips. I'm going to try to uh, hotwire the engine to make sure my new plan is going to work. I really can't see what the hell I'm gripping to. Did I get it? Okay, I think I got that one. And I believe when I touch this to this line, it's going to start the engine. And it might be a little bit of sparking involved. Oh my god, nine boxes on the dock and two on the deck. Eleven boxes shipped direct from Inverness, Scotland. These boxes contain my personal effects and my tools that belong to my father and his father and probably clothing and shoes and lord knows what else though. We're going to be going through these boxes in the next couple of days. Try to get it sorted quickly so that I can keep my focus on my solar panel insulation. Anyway, good day. Have these things finally aboard. Hey there. Ooh, baby. 11 of these boxes are on board. Damn. Huh. Yeah, 11 boxes on board. Um, these boxes have come from Inverness, Scotland. And it gives me a moment of reflection because they're only here because of friends of mine and good people. So there's Mad Mike Heller and Andrew Weston up in Scotland who were the ringleaders behind getting these boxes packed up. Thank you, Andrew, and from Mike for figuring out the best way to ship them. That's from Mike. And my friend Ron, who lives up in upstate uh, Florida, and Ron was kind enough to be the delivery point for all these boxes because it's very difficult for me to accept deliveries here at the marina, right at the marina, at the dock house. And once I get here, all I have is a bicycle, so I have a very difficult time getting them around. So Ron agreed to receive these packages and then drive them down to me. So he spent, um, well, he drove out of his way two hours, you know, to bring these boxes. So I think about Ron and Andrew and Mike. I'm very thankful for the folks I know, folks I met along the way in life, and great people. So, thanks guys, appreciate it. Now let's get them inside before it rains. You know, <clears throat> words come easily to me, I can say words. But I don't have words to express, you know, just how grateful I am to have good friends. You know, Andrew and I, and Mike and I, we've worked on our own boats in Scotland. We helped each other out when somebody needed help. Just a couple of, well, a few guys, and then Graham was out there too, don't forget Graham. We all have a common dream, <clears throat> which was, you know, get a boat and get it ready for sea and charge out upon the ocean and break free of the life that we all become accustomed to, you know, living, you know, you know, the business of living stuff. And for them to take the time to get me this, you know, that hits me right in the damn heart, you know, it's what... Ah! But we had a good day with engine maintenance and that I got the oil changed and I changed the 
raw water intake hose. And you think, well, hell, that doesn't sound like two hours worth of work, but when no maintenance has been done for a long time, everything seems to take longer. And personally, I'm probably out of practice myself. The oil change kicked my ass because I had difficulty getting oil out of the engine. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, Grill is on. Oh, I'll be right over there. Thanks, sir. And the grill is on. That means I need to go cook. All right, so this was the old hose. And you can see the crack. So how does it crack? Well, let's take a further back look and maybe you'll see why. So when people come to do work on the engine, where are their feet going to go? So the white deck all the way down is about two full feet down at the end of the engine and so I think what happens is people come down and they put their feet here on the exhaust hose and or they put their foot on that hose and that's why it's cracked. That's the only two hoses that have bad cracking. Okay and I didn't buy replacement for this yet because I'm thinking of a re-engineering job but this one is pretty straightforward and much 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 more vulnerable. If this hose breaks it's above the water line you know so you're and the outlet on the end of the boat is above the water line big big difference this hose at that height that's below the water line so if this hose had broken right there you'd have a flooding event okay. so why would it be a flooding event okay well, let's, let's trace the system back in there see the ugly green covered verdigris covered bronze valve with the t-handle it's a 90 degree valve it cannot be moved I put every ounce of ass I had into that and I could not make it move. And they've got it up here that goes through a 90, goes horizontal through a big hose. They couple it down to the smaller size hose. And then it goes into the strainer. And chunkies get removed supposedly. I can't even see into the strainer and I'd love to clean it. But it's the same problem. It's about it's flooding the boat. Um, and then the water comes out through the, now through the new hose and that's the raw water pump. So I'm gonna be removing that raw water pump tomorrow and taking it to a shop locally because they'll rebuild it, new bearings and everything. And that's, according to the mechanic, that's probably the most likely thing that is gonna kill me is that um, your raw water pump can fail. This is the fresh water side pump and he said they have a very, very low rate of failure. Ship is a happy ship. <laughs> okay. okay, so I'm using my headlamp. So that's the raw water pump driving thing, whatever you call it, that daily rotates with the gears of the engine. I don't know if that's a timing belt underneath or something. Lord hope not, but mechanic guy said that rarely fails, whatever it is. So all I have to do is put on the new gasket and the new pump. And here's the new pump. So the new pump has been uh, freshly rebuilt by the uh, shop here in town. And they have a very, very good reputation. So 250 bucks is all, which I think is not so bad considering they put on new seals, new bearing, and I've got all the old pieces, parts in the boat. So kind of like a traditional workshop, but let's get this done. I got stuff to do today. Everybody, thank you for watching the episode. The next time I make an episode, I, I should be with me sailing this boat. 
I don't know exactly the details of where we're going to be. Um, part of the problem is that I don't really know where I should take the boat. A lot of that has to do with getting visas from my girlfriend and weather. You know, it's hurricane season and any, in this area you always have to be mindful of hurricanes whenever you pick a destination or a route. Um, so, I mean, right now it's thunderstormy, but that's normal for the afternoon in Florida. And you're never going to get away from that. But, uh, so, I'll do my best to stay in touch. And I hope you stick with me. Hope we get this boat to sea in the next couple of weeks. And until then, take care, everyone. Bye. The funny thing is, it's like Scotland weather. <laughs> Rainy all day and gray all day. If it was 50 degrees colder, it'd be just like Scotland.